You're listening to the 10 minute podcast challenge that will prove every place is the same. Welcome your host, the irreverent, the cosmopolitan, the wicked, Daniela Vlascala. Hello, and welcome to Every Place is the Same. I am thrilled to welcome my guest and fellow podcaster, Bill Antonui. Hi, Bill. Hi. Bill, you have two podcasts. Bad Gay Movies, which explores the best of the worst in LGBT cinema, and My Criterions, which talks about the movies and memories they inspire. That is correct. Click in the link in our show notes and it will take you there. Thank you, yes. But enough about that. Bill, most recently, you went to Cardiff, Wales. Yes. And? It's lovely. It's, uh, the weather was nice. I was there in July. Uh, it was, um, never too warm and never too cold. It was Goldilocks weather. And a couple of years ago, you also went to Whitsunday Islands. Yes. Where is that? That is in, uh, Queensland, Australia. And what was that like? It's a tropical, it's, it looks like Fantasy Island when you're there. It's tropical. There's large mountains covered in rainforest trees. It's very hot and very humid and very beautiful. Now, would you say that Cardiff, Wales and Whitsunday Islands are the same? No, not at all. No. Well, today on Every Place is the Same, we are going to prove that Whitsunday Islands and Cardiff, Wales are the same. Can't wait. Captain Cook. Arrived in Australia and brought the Europeans there, yes. That's right. Yeah. Now, do you know why they're called the Whitsunday Islands? No, but it's, it's a big old English name, so I imagine it has something to do with him. You're wrong. Uh, wow, interesting. Whitsunday Islands has its current name because seven days after Easter is when Captain Cook arrogantly decided he would name these islands the Whitsunday Islands off the northern coast of Queensland, Australia. Interesting. I did not know that. No one told me that while we were there. Do you know what the international date line is? Yes. Can you explain it for our international listeners? Well, it's one of the uh, uh, longitudes in the... uh... Allow me, Bill. This is, after all, a 10-minute podcast. The international date line is a line of demarcation between two consecutive calendar dates. It passes through the mid-Pacific Ocean and follows a 180-degree longitude north-south line on the Earth. A time-space continuum, if you will. Right, yeah. Now, do you think that that also happens to Doctor Who? Uh, Possibly. Travels in time. Right, yes. So he could end up anywhere. It's true. At any time. Correct. Well, that kind of happened to Captain Cook. Yeah. Although not a time traveler like Doctor Who, it seems Captain Cook arrived on what we now refer to as the Whitsunday Islands. And at that particular moment in time, there was no international dateline. Right, that's it was right. actually a Monday. Oh, interesting. So it's an it's an erroneous name. Yes. Oh. It should be called the Whit Monday Islands. <laughs> Much harder to say though. Cardiff, Wales. Yes. More green space than any other city in Europe. Uh very likely true. Very likely? Well, I saw a lot of green while I was there walking through the city and uh going just outside the city as well. We we went to the top of uh Penny Van I thought it was a mountain because I walked it, but it's a hill, and uh, I've never seen so much green as far as the eye can see. It's very beautiful. Is it easy being green? Uh, it, for the grass, yes. For me to walk all the way up it to the top of a mountain was not. Snowdonia National Park, the Taft Trail. I don't think I walked that either. It's a green trail. Interesting. In Wales. Okay. Nagaro Sea Trail, great walk. Didn't do that either. I mostly drank. What did you drink? Witherspoons is a chain of pubs there that sell really cheap booze. And for you could get a what they called a Godfather martini, which was Amaretto and Pepsi Max and Jack Daniels. It's the most delicious thing you've ever had. It was five pounds for a glass or six fifty for a pitcher. Did you get tanked? I got tanked. Not ashamed to admit. Now, what did you drink in Whitsunday Islands? Uh, a lot of whiskey. Straight? I, I usually drink it with Diet Coke, actually. It sounds like you were fortified in both places. I was very much so. 
Did you go to the Norfolk Island? No, did not. One of the famous penal colonies were there. Oh, I didn't know that. When you were in Cardiff, did you eat at the Clink? I did not. Do you, have you heard of the Clink? Uh, that sounds familiar. Someone probably told me about it while I was there. It's a prison in Cardiff, Wales, but it's a restaurant. Right. Where the inmates can make you food and you can eat there. So it's still a prison? Yes, it is. Oh, int- that's int- I did not know about that, no. In Whitby Island, did you feel like you were served by any former penal colony people? Well, Australians are a rowdy bunch, so it's not that shocking that they descend from people who were sent there because England no longer wanted them. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite place in Whitsunday Islands? We took a day-long cruise out to the coral reef on... A, the Great Barrier Reef? The, right, the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, see it now while it's still there. And it's very much blanched out now. It's not as colorful as it used to be, but... Was Blanche your favorite golden girl? I was. I don't know that I ever had a favorite, but my humor is much more like Dorothy than any of the other ones. Now, in Cardiff, Wales, what was one of your favorite things that you did? We went to Kerfilly Castle, and it's a very old castle. There are parts of the wall that are falling over, and uh, it, that, that is what I enjoyed the most. Bill. As concisely as you can, what is your favorite thing that you ate in Cardiff? Fish and chips. Fish and chips? Yes. Did you have any fish and chips in Whitsunday Islands? No. No? No. What did you eat there? A lot of, like, meat and vegetables, not a lot of salads. So you ate a lot of meat and potatoes? Meat and peas, actually. Meat and peas? Yeah, in both countries. (laughs) In both countries. Yes. So you ate meat and peas in Cardiff, Wales as well. Uh, the In the UK, they serve peas with just about everything. Ah, so peas is a favorite. It is. Were you appeased? I was very appeased. I actually liked eating in England a lot. Roger that. Now, this infamous Captain Cook seems to get a lot of credit for naming parts of Australia. One part in particular is today still called New South Wales. That's right. Why is that? I assume because something about it reminded him of Wales. That's usually why the English give places the same names that they have at home. What do you think that was? In New South Wales? Yeah. I guess that's a greener part of Australia, but otherwise I don't really know what he would have seen that reminded him of home. Or of Wales, I should say. I don't know where he was from. They're both on the coast. True, yes. They both have beaches. True. They both have peas. It's very true. He probably had peas. While he and was there. some convicts. Yes, yes, yep. In Wales, everyone either is a convict or looks like one, that's for sure. If you have a rough trade fantasy, it's a great place to go. What about Whitsunday Islands? Uh, not, a, not a lot of convict-looking people there. A lot of beach bums in the best possible way. Um... Very, it's a very small town atmosphere. It's all um, moms who drive the cabs there. Would your mom drive a cab? Uh, yeah, not well, but she would. Mom cab. Mom Sounds cab. like a sitcom. It would be a great sitcom, actually. I'm going to go home and write it. I'm in Cardiff, Wales. We're together. We're walking down the street. Where are you taking me? Well, first, I'll take you... Uh, Queen. There's a, there's a street called Queen Street, ironically enough. The that, main street. R- right, that runs through the main center of Cardiff. And it, actually, most of it does not allow cars. It's a thoroughfare between stores. And I would definitely take you there because it's beautiful. And there's a giant double-decker carousel in the middle of it that I would definitely um, take you to to have a ride on because, you know, you're so childlike and delightful. And then um, we would go to... One of the two gay bars that I discovered around the corner that play a lot of ABBA and Kylie Minogue. Whitsunday Islands. Yes. We're walking around. Where are you taking me? There's a huge pub that's like giant and, from what I recall, didn't even have a roof. And it has a huge screen and live performances. And it's it's very friendly and nice and fun. There's not much else to do there. So other than take you on the uh, on the cruise to the reef, there's not much else to do. So and that's could, what's nice about it. So you could take me for a ride? Basically, yes. In Cardiff yeah. or in Whit Sunday? Yeah. Whether it was Whit Sunday or Whit Monday? That's right. But you have your wits about you, so you'd be okay. Bill, 
I want to thank you for being my guest today. It was absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Whether you want to get your fill on peas, green spaces, and coal, or whether you want to explore the space-time continuum like Doctor Who or Captain Cook and figure out if it's Sunday or Monday, or whether you want to dine with prisoners on the inside or the outside, or just forget all of that and get trashed with a stiff drink, thank you, Bill, for proving that the Whitsunday Islands in Queensland, Australia, and Cardiff, Wales, are in fact the same. So happy to have been of help. You just listened to Every Place is the Same, hosted by Daniela Vlaskalik and produced by Drumcast Productions. Leave us a five star review on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at Every Place is the Same. Until the next time, enjoy your travels.